<clears throat> Mikhail Popkov, known as the Angarsk Maniac, the Werewolf, and the Wednesday Killer, is a prolific Russian serial killer and rapist who was convicted of sexually assaulting and murdering 77 women and one man, but has confessed to over 83 murders committed across various cities in Russia between 1992 and 2010, maybe even as late as 2012. Hey there, my name is Misha. Welcome to All Things True Crime, or welcome back if you're a regular. If you enjoy this video, please like it, that way more people will see it, and then subscribe to my channel so you won't miss my next video. The subscribe button is right below the video, and then if you ding the bell, you'll get notified the next time I upload. That's all things true crime. All right, let's dig into this dirtbag's crimes. The wind is blowing so hard, it takes your breath away. It just cuts right through every layer of clothes you're wearing, chilling you straight to the bone as the temperatures steadily drop in Angarsk, Irkutsk, Oblast, Russia, on March 7th, 1964. A very dysfunctional married couple makes the trek to the local hospital where a little boy is soon to be born to an alcoholic and abusive mother and a mostly absent father. Unfortunately, that that we just described is so familiar for so many of these people that become serial killers. After the birth of this little boy, the little family of three falls off the grid, just disappears, until the boy, now a man, marries Alina Popkova around 1987. This man joins the police force sometime in the mid-1990s. If we fast forward now to 1998, he resigns from the police force and takes a job as a security guard at an oil and chemical plant and also at a private firm. At night, Mikhail becomes the werewolf, a creature that roams the bars in the late evening and early morning, offering rides to drunk women. Once they're in his car, Instead of taking them home like he's promised, uh, like before they even get in his car, he instead drives them to a wooded area and rapes, tortures, murders, and mutilates them. Some victims are stabbed up to 170 times, leaving the body so wounded that it appears like it has been torn open by a werewolf. Hence his moniker, the werewolf. Also, I had a viewer tell me that in Russia, corrupt cops are called werewolves. So there's that interesting tidbit as well. And another reason he is called the werewolf, of course. If he is unable to find a woman needing a ride outside a bar, the werewolf will blend into his surroundings, entering the bar, offering drinks to women before later offering them a ride home. So get some drunk and then it takes advantage. Sometimes he will beat them strangle them and hit them with blunt objects like a large rock, in addition to stabbing them and then sexually assaulting their corpse. He often forces them to undress before he murders them, making it easier for him to sexually assault them after they're deceased. And that's so nasty, crazy dude, dirtbag. So while he's still a police officer, he takes knives, hammers, ropes, and other supplies from the police evidence room and uses these things, these devices, to murder his victims. He never uses these supplies more than once, though. Out of paranoia and an abundance of caution, he wipes his prints off the tools before discarding them in various places across the city. A DNA match identified his car in 2012, which led Russian investigators down a very disturbing road, tracing back to 1992. He targets women between the ages of 15 and 40. His weapons of choice are a hammer and an axe. After murdering his victims and committing necrophilia, he would often, or he often dumps their mutilated bodies in forests, roadsides, and sometimes even a local cemetery. His claim, I am purging the city of Angarsk of immoral women. Okay, that's so. When the investigators dig deeper, they uncover his wife's affair. This leads them to believe the affair is another motive for his killing spree, brutally murdering women in the place of his wife. As investigators piece this case together, they notice some definite similarities among his victims, 
They report that many, if not all, victims resemble his mother, someone who abused and neglected him as a child. Seems to me there are multiple motives since all of these that make sense, right? Number one, targeting prostitutes to cleanse the city of immoral women. Okay, that's crazy, but okay. Number two, beginning his killing spree after learning of his wife's affair. Also crazy, but more of a motive. And number three, targeting women who resemble his abusive mother. Hmm. It's one messed up dude, right? I mean, his psyche's got to be pretty crazy. So he's killing women in place of his wife to uh, get back at her, get back at her for having an affair. And then women that resemble his mom, in addition to having a motive of wanting to cleanse the city of prostitutes. Okay. He's crazy. According to the werewolf himself, this all started one night when he offered a ride to a woman. He says that she had, he had no bad intentions. But then on that drive to her house, he suddenly filled with the desire and urge to murder her, and he gave into it. Multiple experts believe he is responsible for a good number of unsolved, unexplained murders in the areas he is known to have operated in. So it's one, you know, it's one messed up dude. The werewolf's killing spree starts unraveling one night, when something strange happens. Like normal, he picks up an unsuspecting woman, offers her a drive home. Instead of taking her home, though... He drives her to a forest, drags her out of his vehicle, and just rams her head right into a tree trunk. Okay, whatever. It's crazy. For her, everything fades to black at this point, right? It just knocks her out. Just upon impact with the tree, when her forehead meets the tree, she just passes out. Who wouldn't? The next morning, though, she wakes up. So she, he didn't kill her. She's completely naked and lying in the dirt right next to the tree where he slammed her head in, uh, against. So why didn't he murder her? I mean, it's weird, right? So she gets up, brushes herself off, and manages to hitch a ride to a local hospital to get looked over. When the police arrive, she provides a description of her attacker, which leads them to Popkov himself. Uh, initially, though, the police refuse to believe it, since he has been an officer for so many years. And his wife, who works for the police station, provides an alibi for her husband. I mean, it's case closed, right? Not so fast. If we fast forward to the investigators getting the results of the DNA evidence they submitted to the crime lab for this girl's case, not only is Popkov's DNA found at the crime scene, but the tire marks also left in the dirt match the tires on his vehicle, and the tire marks found at most of his victims' crime scenes. Boom, dirtbag, gotcha now, ooh. When testing a victim's DNA, the, the, one of the latest victims, they discovered that this victim had syphilis at the time of her death. Somehow, they also learn that Popkov has contracted the same disease. This new information is just enough to force him to provide a DNA sample. They, they, can, they force his hand. He is arrested on June 23, 2012, while driving to Vladivostok to buy a new car the same day that he provides the police the DNA sample. It seems his motive for wanting a new car is due to the trace evidence, like fibers that could have been collected as evidence at his crime scenes as well as matching tire marks. Smart guy. But a little late, you dummy. He cooperates fully with the authorities and even takes them to each and every crime scene, explaining in great detail what he did to each victim. Fast forward now with me to 2015. Popkov is found guilty of 22 murders and two counts of attempted murder. He later admits to 60 more crimes, 59 murders and one attempted murder. He shows no remorse during his confessions as he works with the police to show them the crime scenes during his trial and during his interviews. Instead, he has a smile on his face. Ugh, it's crazy. So he's examined by psychologists who determine that he loves killing, along with sadism and is into necrophilia. Some Russians say this means he's not competent to stand trial, and that's BS. He is competent to stand trial, and thankfully the court agrees. He earns the name the werewolf due to the brutality of his, of his rapes and murders, like I mentioned. For example, he beheaded at least one victim and gouged the heart out of another. He earned the name the Angarsk Maniac because he was from Angarsk, and he's also been called the Wednesday Murderer because many of his victims were found early in Wednesday mornings. That's kind of weird. He claims he stopped killing because he became sexually impotent. This suggests a strong sexual motive behind his murders. No surprise, since he raped his victims and stabbed them, as stabbing is oftentimes associated with sexual motives. In July of 2020, Popkov confessed to two more murders, bringing the total number to 83. 
The authorities speculate he murdered up to 200 women. Some are confident he will continue confessing to more as he gets older. Popkov is in Black Dolphin, also known as Penal Colony 6 of the Federal Penitentiary Service of Russia in Orenburg Oblast, a high-security prison in a remote area on the border with Kazakhstan. This place sounds sweet enough, <laughs> but in fact holds Russia's most brutal criminals, child molesters, murderers, terrorists, cannibals, and of course, serial killers. The setup is that two inmates share a 50 square foot cell behind three sets of steel doors and are kept under 24 hour video surveillance. Guards check their cells every 15 minutes, 15 minutes, and they're not allowed to sit on their beds for 16 hours. When they are allowed to leave their cells, they are forced to walk bent over at the waist, hands cuffed behind their backs, above their hips, and blindfolded. This method is considered unique to Black Dolphin and provides the guards with maximum control over the prisoners. It's really smart. It's good for them. Uh, there is no prison yard. Their only exercise consists of them pacing in another cell, a 50 square foot cell, while their cell is searched for contraband every 15 minutes. No prisoner has ever escaped, except by death. There is no cafeteria. They all eat in their cells. They get four meals a day of soup and bread. The inmates have said that you can't think about your fate really very much, otherwise you would lose your mind. Sounds like the perfect place for the likes of Mikhail Popkov. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel, All Things True Crime. On the next week's episode, we're going to learn all about Yang Zhenhai, also known as the Monster Killer a Chinese serial killer and rapist who confessed to sexually assaulting 23 and murdering 67 between 1999 and 2003 across four provinces in China. He is China's most prolific serial killer since the establishment of the People's Republic in 1949. Catch all the details surrounding this monster right here on All Things True Crime. It's truly chilling. Until next time, stay safe.